Brian Fritz with AOL Fan House here. WWE Survivor Series coming up on Sunday. Time now to speak with two-time WWE champion, current WWE superstar Sheamus. So you've done a lot already with your career in WWE. It's been uh, less than 18 months now, two-time champion already. Have you uh, exceeded expectations in your mind? Not at all, fellow. I'm uh, I've a lot more I want to achieve. I actually, you know, right now I'm a bit disappointed. I'm still not WWE champion, but uh, I've got... Uh, Bit of a sidetrack on mine with John Morrison at Survivor Series this Sunday. He was sticking his nose in my business, trying to embarrass me. I just saw what happened with Santino Morella a couple of uh, weeks ago. So uh, I'm going to make sure that John Morrison uh, gets the beating of his life and uh, learns a lesson never, ever to mess with an angry Irishman again. Like you said, you're going to be facing John Morrison on the pay-per-view. What's your thoughts about the match style going into that? Because uh, it's a little bit of a different style between the two of you. Yeah, that fella, he's uh, very acrobatic. He can move around a lot, move around the ring a lot. He's um, He can do stuff that, you know, I could never dream of doing. But the thing is, it's going to be a fight. And uh, he's only going to be able to jump around for so much or for so long. But when I get my hands on him, I'll ground him. And, uh, you know, I'm. to me, it's... It's a big thing, Survivor Series. I debuted in my pay-per-view there last year, actually, coincidentally enough, beating John Morrison. Uh, so that's how I made my pay-per-view debut, or finished my pay-per-view debut. So it's going to be more of the same again this Sunday, but it's it's going to be an interesting match. And the crowd are going to be into it. John, John Morrison's getting a lot of uh, momentum. He's, the fans are behind him. They like him. His style is great. He's unorthodox. And, uh, but when he gets up against my hard-hitting style, fella, he'll be bruised black and blue the next day. Like I said, you've accomplished a lot in your short time with WWE. What moment uh, to you stands out right now for you? you know, I get that question asked a lot, actually. Uh, what's my defining moment? But to be honest with you, like this, in such a short time, I've had so many different moments from becoming the first WWE champion, uh, my debut in Raw, I mean, the second time WWE champion, mainly with Triple H, and then putting Triple H out. Extreme Rules, and then like main event in Survivor Series against Orton, and, or SummerSlam with Orton. Um, but uh, I'm just every week I'm making you more and more memories, more and more moments, and we're here now in the Amway Center, which will take part from Monday Night Raw the night after Survivor Series. So I mean, fellow, I'm tearing it up, and you know, as I said, it's it's moment after moment for me. You mentioned Triple H. He's a guy that uh, you've become close to a little bit. What uh, what kind of effect has, has Triple H had on you and your career so far? The only thing that came close to me in Triple H is my boot in his head. But uh, as opposed to being someone I looked up to, I've definitely looked up to Triple H before I even became before I even came into this industry. I mean, I, I loved his style. He was aggressive. He was vicious. Um, he took no prisoners, and that's something that I take uh, special pride in when I'm in the ring. He's uh, there's no, not too much finesse about him, but he gets the job done, you know, and it's a fight every time he's in there, and that's the same with me. So I take a lot of, uh, I guess, when I watch Triple H or I've watched Triple H, you know, especially the 90s into the, the 2000s when he was really, like, really starting to gain momentum, when he was starting to come into his own. Um, I, you know, I took a lot, of, a lot from his style, and I watched him an awful lot, and, you know, he was a big influence on me in that way. What did it mean for you to already get a chance to face him at WrestleMania on that huge stage like he did last year? It was great, fella. It was a lot of people uh, who just thought I'd disappear after my first title reign. But uh, I stayed in there, and I'm still staying in there. And to hang with Triple H WrestleMania to prove everybody wrong, as I do each and every week, it was great. And it was, it was def that is probably the highlight of my career so far. If you want to go down, if you want to be specific about it, that's definitely probably the highlight of my career so far. Jimmy Wang Yang did an interview recently where he talked about uh, before you got into WWE years ago that uh, you were both on a show over in uh, Milan, Italy, and he got an opportunity to choose whoever he wanted to face, and he said that he picked you, and that helped you uh, turn into your uh, your deal with the WWE and get that opportunity. Is uh, Do you remember that? Is that the way that went down, and uh, how much did that help you if that's the case? Uh, I remember I remember having a tryout match with Jimmy uh, a long time ago, uh, I wasn't sure that he picked me. I didn't know, I wasn't realized that. But uh, I mean, the match for me was a dark. It was a dark match. It was a match before the show in Milan. Um, it was an opportunity for them to see what I could do. But personally, I would have got signed either way. I was back in London the next week, and you know, I mean, I have a lot of respect for Jimmy. But uh, either or, I still, I still would end up where I am. You've been a long-time WWE fan since you were a kid. This past week on Raw, they had the old-school edition. What was it like being around some of the uh, superstars from yesteryear? It was great, fella. I was like, like a kid watching again, seeing everyone like the Sheik, uh, Rowdy Roddy Piper, the Million Dollar Man, Jim Duggan. Uh, it was, you know, Bob Orton. I mean, it was it was crazy. It was great. I mean, even the way the ring was set up and the, the, the stage and everything, it was class. I think they should do it more often, but for me... 
who's been a fan, someone who's been a fan his whole life. It was it was great. I was just thrilled to be there. I was thrilled to see it all go down. So yeah, I definitely need to start doing that more often and bring back a lot of the old school uh, superstars because they paved the way for a lot of us and there's a lot of respect that has to go out to them. Was there anyone in particular you looked at and maybe tried to pick their brain a little bit? Uh, there was a lot going on. I don't have much time to be picking brains, but as I said, for people who influenced me, I've always been a fan of the anti-hero and Ted DiBiase, uh, Rowdy Roddy Piper, you know, it was even George Animal Steel was there. But uh, those those type of guys, they're they're the guys I've always been accustomed to. I've never been a fan of the heroes or the baby faces or slapping hands and you know what I mean. Get, uh, just looking for the, the adoration of the fans and stuff. I just do my own thing and. They either like me or you don't. If you don't, tough. Did you get an opportunity to watch uh, Roddy Piper do that promo at the end of the show? I did, yeah. What was your thoughts about that? I just think he's a legend. I think the fella's amazing. I watched him as a kid, and he just, just shows like people like that have drawn people into WWE Universe, and that's why uh, they paved the way for all of us. I mean, there wouldn't be... There would, we wouldn't have what we have without these, without these legends. And that's why it's great to bring them back. You know, They get a chance to step out in front of the crowd again. You get to relive a lot of your younger, younger years or their years in the spotlight. So I thought it was amazing. I think Roddy Piper is probably one of the best ever. And totally, you know, sometimes a bit underrated maybe by some people, but to me, he's, he's an unbelievable legend. Any one of those guys in particular you wish you uh, could meet in the ring? I'd love to, re I'd love to meet Roddy. I'd love to meet uh, the Million Dollar Man. Uh, Bob Orton, a lot of those guys, as I said, like the Sheik, that would have been fun. Even Volkov was there, that was hilarious. But uh, either or, I like to mix it up with them. You always do, you always want to mix it up with the, with the idols you watch, uh, you know, when you're younger. Of course, I would have beaten them black and blue, and I wouldn't have stood a chance, but still, I would have got a chance to mix it up with them. So, it's, uh, you know, as I said, Triple H, I got to mix it up with him, and he's someone I watched from my early years. So, one down, maybe take her at Mania, I don't know, who knows, and that streak, you know what I'm saying? I was going to bring that up because there's a lot of people wondering who Undertaker could face at WrestleMania this coming year, and people are looking at a, a, a fresh face for him to face, and maybe you could be that guy. What would that mean to you to face him on that stage? be phenomenal. To go to WrestleMania itself is just amazing. I mean, walking out there last uh, this year, last year, this year, it seems so long ago, everything's so, happening so fast, but against Triple H, walking at that crowd, fella, I, I, I'm not ashamed to admit my knees went a bit wobbly for half a second there, looking at that crowd of 90,000 people. Um, to go in with Taker, to win the Mania any time is special, but to win against someone like Taker, who's got the undefeated streak, I know personally, you know, if Taker used to be a ginger, he knows what it's like, he needs to have the pasty white skin, he turned his back on that, that's fair enough, but uh, would he be willing to take me on? I think he knows that if he took on me, he'd, uh, his streak might be pretty much there for the taking, you know, how long, much more, how much longer can he hold on to that streak? I guarantee if I go in there with him, I'll be, I'll end, I'll take it home. I'll be glad. I'll be going home to Ireland, the heroes. Welcome, fella. I'll be standing on one of those open-top buses. That's how good it'll be for me. But let's see if he accepts the challenge or not. I don't know. I think you cornered the market on the pasty white skin when it comes to WWE. Yeah, well, as I said, like there's only room for one, right? Right now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, before you got called up to the main roster, obviously you were with Florida Championship Wrestling. Um, what's it like now to see some of the other guys that you got an opportunity to train with there? Uh, Michael McGillicuddy, uh, Alex Riley, some other guys that, that are now on, on the main roster like you are. I think it's fantastic. It just shows that there's a changing of the guard happening right now. It's uh, I don't, I'm not being big. I probably am being big headed here because I I do believe that I'm the one who started this chain reaction. I mean, I'm the one who came in and in such a short time became WWE champion. Since then, you've had a lot of the Nexus guys come in. Wade Barrett, who got signed by me, he's an incredible job. Drew McIntyre is on the blue brand. You got people like Kofi Kingston, Dolph Ziggler, McGillicuddy, and uh, Husky Harris have come in there. Uh, it just it's just a, such an influx of youth of youth coming through, and it just shows the what a great job the guys in FCW are doing. Saying that, at the same time, I think that uh, you know it's also a good thing for the crowd too for W Universe because for a long time we've been seeing the same sort of matches, the same superstars all the time. And I said we're coming here to the Amway Center. Last time we were here, I guarantee you, what Raw was here. It's a complete different amount of faces uh, uh, that'll be uh, in that ring. A complete different amount of talent. So it's great everybody wins, fella. There's hungry talent in there. The, youth, the youthful t sides are, are hungry. They're as hungry as I am. No, they're not as hungry as I am. No one is as hungry as me. But they want to succeed. And the people who are winning are the WWE Universe. People coming to these shows, people being blown away, but blown away by the talent that's out there. With that youth movement that's going on with WWE right now, what in your mind has made you stand out even among the other guys are now getting an opportunity? 
So I didn't mess around from day one. I knew what I had of something different. I'm not tanned. I don't have, you know, long hair, black hair, shaved head. Uh, from day one, I've been different. I've also brought a positive uh, image of Ireland in. No more, like, you know, Darby O'Gill and the little people, muck or leprechauns, all that rubbish. I'll bring something po positive here, you know. And, uh, like, don't get me wrong, Finley's a mentor of mine, too, and he's been fantastic. And he's, he's led the way for me and a lot of other guys. But at the same time, I've come in here. And I, when it gets to the ring, when the bell goes, there's no one as aggressive as me. I don't jump off the top rope, I don't flip over onto the floor, I can't do moonsaults, I can't do 450s. What I can do is I can bring a very aggressive style in. Either you're man enough to stand up against me or you're not. Most of the time, they're not. So uh, I can tell you no one hits as hard as I do. And nobody wants to face me. As I said, Survivor Series, John Morrison is just going to find out how hard I hit. Just a couple last things. WWE fans have come up with some, some uh, creative things to say about you. Uh, stay Push Marshall Man, uh, look like a jar of mayonnaise. Um, I've heard that they think you look like Beaker of the Muppets. Uh, is there any particular one that's gotten to you? No, uh, I actually was enjoying this interview until you started turning the uh, screw there and mentioned stuff like Just Be asking the question. Beaker from the Muppets? Yeah. Are you serious, fella? I've heard that. Yeah. That's ridiculous. I look like nothing like Beaker from the Muppets. I'm far too handsome to look like Beaker from the Muppets. But I have seen some creative stuff out there. As I said, the great thing about W Universe is they can bring their fans, they can cheer who they want, they can boo who they want. I get a lot of boos. I won't be, I'm not lying, but the jar of mayonnaise is probably one thanks to John Cena. I've, I've got that guy to thank for that. But um, it's, it's all fun. As long as we entertain the fans, as long as W Universe are entertained, that's all that matters. Once, they got, once we send them home happy. Let's have a good time. That's all that matters. SmackDown versus Raw video game is out now. You're in that game. What, what's your thoughts about your player in there? Because I believe your overall rating was like a 92, but it said your charisma was a 70? That's a joke. I had a word at those THQ guys about that. That's absolutely ridiculous. Plus, I should be 100 anyway, but the, uh, the charisma thing is a joke. I actually pinned one of the guys against the wall and asked him. He said he promised he next, next year he'd sort it out. There's no, more, no one more charismatic than me, fella. Nobody. Who? Who's more charismatic than me? John Cena with a hand over his face and a pair of jean shorts from the 1990s. Randy Orton who thinks he's actually, he actually thinks he's a snake. Does a load of these mad eye movements. Who else? The big show who puts his hand up in the air and screams. Listen, fella. I am Mr. Charisma. <laughs> You're laughing now. Yeah. But you, you know what I'm talking about. I'm so, still upset about that. Since you're on the road all the time, and you are from Ireland, have you been able to find a good place that has a good Irish stew that you enjoy? There's a couple of bars around that I've actually had a chance to go, especially in Tampa, which is up the road here from Orlando. Four green fields and the wooden doors, uh, two of those places. But it's very hard, fella. I'm always on the road. It, you kind of, when are you going to need to go and get some food? You kind of stop wherever you can and eat, which kind of means a lot of McDonald's and stuff. No bread, of course, no mayonnaise. You know what I mean? No mayonnaise. Wait, no McDonald's mayonnaise. is Irish, though, isn't it? Mc McDonald's? I think it's uh, Scottish or something. I don't know. Okay. It Close enough? Maybe. Well, I'll make allowances for that. Well, Scottish, Scot Scottish are known as second-rate Irish, so I, I'll take that one. We we'll appreciate the time. WWE will have Survivor Series coming up Sunday night down in Miami. It will be Sheamus taking on John Morrison on that pay-per-view. You'll also see Wade Barrett challenging Randy Orton for the WWE Championship, WWE Heavyweight Championship on the line as well, Kane taking on Edge. Thanks for the time. Appreciate Anytime, it. Anytime, fella. Appreciate it.